Yo, it's your boy Galaxy Wick, aka Wicked of Ghetto Mafia. Yeah, and I'm cooling with the industry most wanted with my girl Tampa. Yep. Boy, Galaxy, wake up Bring here. Back, no snake eyes. Uh-huh. AKA straight from the dead. Baby, need no shoes. Y'all follow me right here. Mama need right a here. house too. Uh. See the south side. We don't hooked up on the east side. Hey, what's going on, man? It is your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the Industry's Most Wanted Podcast. Most Big Industries Most Wanted, wanted. not the little one. Listen, we got a superstar in the building, a whole living legend. You know what I'm saying? A superstar checking in. Somebody definitely that I well respect in the industry. You've been doing this for a long time. Uh, Galaxy Wick, a.k.a. Wicked, Ghetto Ghetto Mafia, Mafia, you know, definitely a major, major Atlanta staple. Thank you for being here with us today. Hey, that was was an excellent intro (laughs) because, you know, know, I do a podcast, too. Yes. um, with Beehive ATL, and sometimes when I do an intro, you know, I be fumbling. So, I mean, just hearing you get it out so smooth and t- calling me a legend. and I'm, Hey, it feels good, man. I'm glad to be here. Man, thank you for being yes. here. I think we're kind of long overdue for this. So, shout uh, out yes. to Tia. Yes. You know, connecting long the dots. Uh-huh. You know, we've been, like, following each other yeah. so all that. So. I hit you and be like, what, hey, what, what's happening? Listen, what, what I'm coming? We're, we're here. So, I just want to say thank you for being here today. Thank you. It's an honor to have you sitting here with me. Good. Definitely. Good, um, again, you know, people are familiar with you, but mm-hmm. kind of give us a brief introduction. Well, um, you know, I, um, we're from Decatur, Georgia. Uh, it's, it's two of us. We started out actually as five of us in a group, a group called Ghetto Mafia, which I started. And uh, straight from the deck, straight from the deck. But that was, you know, that was our third album. People think that was like our first, you know, record that came out. We had two records before then: mm. Draw the Line and Full Blooded Niggas, that we dropped through a company called Itchy Bond. Okay, uh, back in the day. Uh, um, because we had a, a legendary rap out of Flint, Michigan, named MC Eric Breed. Okay, so uh, I became friends with Breed in the in the late you know eighty eight, eighty nine, and uh, eventually you know he was very, very instrumental in turning us on the Itchy Bun, and from there we kind of we kind of took off here in the city. Um, but like I said, it started with five of us, and it wound up just two of us, Nino and Wicked. But when I first started, because it took us so long to get out, a lot of people. Fell off. A lot of people, some people went to the army. Some people, you know, went to the middle, you know, anything. And um, me and Nino, we stayed down and we created Ghetto Mafia. And here I am today. Oh. Yep. So let's talk about coming up in Decatur. Yep. You know, which for people who aren't familiar with the Atlanta area is definitely, you know, one of the staple spots here in the Atlanta mm-hmm. area. That's where you grew up. Mm-hmm. Take us back, you know, to your childhood growing up. What was it like? Well, um... I mean, Decatur was always, if, if we're talking late 80s, uh, early 90s, yeah. Decatur was actually um, white at a lot of you know places. Yeah. You know, I went to um, a school called Columbia High School. It's off of Glenwood. I went to Avondale. Um, and it went to East Pasolian up through there. And I, and I went to a school called Stone Mountain. Mm. And I saw the difference in, because Stone Mountain and Clarkson and stuff is uh, inside of DeKalb County. Now, I grew up off of, uh, a street called McAfee and used to be out there trapping it out and, you know, just doing everything that blacks was doing back then. Yeah. And, um, you know, rapping wasn't really on my mind at the time. At the time, Atlanta was known for dancing, mm. believe it or not. They used to say everybody used to yeek and, and all right. that kind of stuff. So I used to go to, you know, sneak in. Columbia used to have a talent show every year, which was like <laughs> the biggest talent show. Like, if you was in Columbia's talent show in the late 80s to early 90s, that, that was for the city. Nah, facts. You see there what I'm saying? Go. And a lot of groups came out of those talent shows. Mm. Uh, Silk, you know, Free Me Baby, them. Uh, oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of, some of, the, some of the biggest are them. And, and athletes, and, and there were things from the school. They so. were getting discovered at these events. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Young Blood, Sean Paul, them. Uh, Rico Wade. Man. Rico was with, I Long think. Long live. I think Crowd Pleasers, I think he was with. Uh, but the, the dance groups were the it's got it's kind of like how new york was where you had back in the day beat street for older people out there they'll know what i'm talking about and you know how people used to dance the battle yes that now they rap battle <laughs> right but the dancer was the thing at first so i was in a group we was called pod <laughs> pimps on dude <laughs> 
<laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Pimps talk- on duty. <laughs> yeah. I got a pimp cup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were, I was talking to Madam. I was talking to T about this last night, and she was just laughing, like, tickle her to death. And she was like, "What were you pimping?" I, I well, I wasn't pimping nothing. You know what I'm saying? Actually, my mama was pimping me to go to school. No, nah, thanks. Uh, but yeah, man, Columbia High School is instrumental in 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 you know talent in Atlanta, and from that. Uh, I started listening to, you know, rap a little bit more. I was more into like, uh, like bass music, like DJ Magic Mike, you know, like um, uh, Soul, Soul Sonic Force. That's a Sonic that that type of stuff. That was my like two live crew. Yeah, I love two live crew. Man, you understand what I'm saying? So that's kind of what I was into, and. Um, I started hearing like, you know, MC Shy D, uh, Kilo Ali, yeah. you know, Raheem the Dream. You know, if you're from Atlanta, they're a staple here also. Yes. And from that I said, well, you know, I can do that kind of, you know, I I can do that music yes. that they're doing. <laughs> and and I was kind of starting to, you know, kind of go in that lane because that's what was the Atlanta lane. What what took me on a whole different path is meeting MC Breed. He had a song out called Ain't No Future in Your Front. Right. Uh, and he had a song out with Tupac, I Gotta Get Mine, I Gotta Get Yours. Mm. At the time, Pac, you know, was pretty much living with Bree. Yeah. And uh, I remember I remember a friend of mine hooked me up. He said, man, because I loved Kilo. Kilo know it, too. We laugh about it all the time. <laughs> What's up, Kilo? And uh, he's uh, my partner, uh, Big Quinn, out of Perry Holmes. He, made me, he said, man, you got skills and stuff, man, but I don't think you, you know what I'm saying, that ain't really your lane. You need to come out here and meet uh, this guy, MC Breed. Mm. And I had never heard of Breed at the time because I was from Atlanta. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and when I got out there, guess who I see? Kilo. Wow. Ali. So I got to actually meet Kilo going out MC Bree house the first time. Of course, you know, we talked about it last too about this. He was very bougie. His head was like, this, <laughs> his, his head was this big. You know what I'm saying? But I met Kilo and this was, I, this sticks in my mind. I'm, I'm sitting at a table, MC Bree, and I'm like, I'm down like Kilo there, MC Bree there, you got Pac them there. Bushwick, Bill, uh, uh, Jazzy, Faye. Wow. Jazzy wasn't even blown yet. Jazzy was working in the garage on the beats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, some of everybody. And I saw Breed on the table. He had a check for Mitchell Bun. It was $80,000. Now, in, in 90... That's a lot of money. Well, to me, it was... And it took everything in me not to, you know what I'm saying, to, to do the K up and not to take everything in me. Not to go outside Bree Head and take that check. Because I had eighty eight thousand dollars at that time, you know, I was rich forever. Could have been life changing for you. Absolutely. But now um Bree, he heard me rap. And I and 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 I rapped and he he was from up north. And so one thing I can say about him that he was so much ahead of his time. That's why he he helped Pac out a little bit, and we're gonna get into that in a minute. But he heard me rap, and when I started doing my first verse, he said, he said, uh, stop right there. And 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 I was like, damn, this nigga don't even like my shit. <laughs> and uh he was like, he said, You got a real big southern draw. I don't know how to really take it. It sounds good, but it was so brand new. Yes. Because I mean, like, I'm like, I'm the first person out of this city almost with doing that type of rap. Right. Well, I'm trying to spit some bars, some, some G <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? That type stuff. Yeah. So, because like I say, Kilo and Alita and all of them, they were doing more of, you know, booty music. Yeah. And uh, so I, 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 I spit that and Bree was like, you know, you know what I'm going to do? Let me think about it. Let me, let me, because back then we got no internet, so I can't leave a nigga with a tape. I'm trying to get in the studio. Yeah. You had to have a bag to get in the studio back in, you know, the late 80s, early 90s. And I'm young at this time. I'm probably 15 or wow. something in there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so I would call Bree. We had the landlines. I would call this man so much that he would take the phone off the hook. And the time you put that big bag on, I got to it outside. They, they know it's me. And so I, I called him one day. He said, I got something for you. He said, uh, have you heard of Eric Sermon? They had a rim shop downtown. And I tell this story to people all the time. And he said, uh, I want you and the group to go down there and rap down there for Eric Sermon. 
Mm. So, and then all this, don't, don't, don't get me twisted. This is not like on a Monday I meet Breed and then Tuesday I'm at Egg Sermons. Right. We're talking six months. We're yes. talking over time. We're talking me, you know, walking from Cobb County train station in patent leather shoes for two miles <laughs> just to be around these niggas because they were doing something that was just unbelievable to me because you can make money off rapping. Man, facts. Just talking. Right. You know, so... I put the work in for that. I'm talking about, you know, I put some hard work in to get to, to get here. And but anyway, I went down to Eric Sermon, and I never forget Keith Murray was there, Red Man was there, and Method was there, Man, and Sermon was there. They legends. was all they they were all yeah. But at the at, at that time. Eric Sermon, I loved because I loved EPMD. EPMD, like, of course. Boy, yeah. So Diddy Slick, Rick, Day to Day, they was you know. So I was. They had a heavy influence on Atlanta. Yes, we used to play the Fresh Party back in the so all those artists would play, and so I knew who Eric Sermon was. Yes, yeah. and um, I start. We started rapping. We did the song uh, three different styles. We kind of, kind of had a cross between. The ghetto boys down south because our accent. Yeah. But leaders of the new school. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? We in there, ah, ah, and all this other kind of shit. <laughs> so uh, I'm rapping and stuff, and uh, and Eric Sermon just walks out. Then uh, Method Man and Keith Murray just walked out. I'm talking about when it got to my verse, when I, when I was a <laughs> rapper. They listened to Nino when it got to me, because my partner Nino is from the Virgin Islands. Mm. For people who don't know that, he's from St. Croix, so he's okay. VIP. So that's him always yelling, wicked. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's Nino. So they was really digging Nino a lot because they saw with Nino that they maybe could get some hooks and stuff out of him. Right. Because he was real raw at the time. He was he was heavy patois, and he was, you know, his chanting was on another level. He don't lost it now. Be telling, you know, you got to get shit together, man. <laughs> He's he Americanized now. He's <laughs> too Americanized <laughs> He's too Americanized now. He can't even chant no more. But, um... <laughs> So they they were kind of feeling they were feeling anyway. Got to me. Everybody walked out besides Red Man. I've come to find out Red Man only didn't leave because I had the gas. In my wow. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> so we wind up rolling up, kicking it, you know, for a minute, and um, and I thought that they didn't like me, but Breed after that he was like, you know, you know, and this ain't the next day, but when he talked to us, he said that, you know, I, uh, I'm feeling it. We got something, and um. Come over to the crib, and I want to introduce you to somebody. And so we go over to the crib, and he introduced us to the, I don't even want to say the dude's name, but they had a um, company called uh, Power Records, him and his wife. And uh, they they had to deal with Itchy Bun. Bree had already been dealing with mm. them. So he, he he calls us over. We do the rap for, for, for this, this A&R, and that was it. They called they called John Abbey up at Itchy Bun, and, and we did. We came out and did... We draw the line over a hundred thousand, just you know here locally. Yeah. So we, you know, we had the streets. Yes. And um, you know, put out that. Put out a, a, the next record was uh, Full Blooded Niggas. I think that was ninety four, ninety five, and then ninety six is when we signed a deal with Bob Johnson, who owned BT. Mm. He had a company with Ernie Singleton. Ernie was the president of MCA. He put out all the Mary Jane back then. The, you know, and uh, Ernie. And and Bob had a company called Fully Loaded Records, where they had the Capers. I mean, oh, what's the name? Was on the, we was talking about that um, KP and Envy, and them was on the yes. label too back then. And so we signed that deal with with Bob, and he just blew straight from the deck out. You know, it would play. We was on the countdown every state, blah 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 blah, and it just and that's what just took us all the way up through there. Yes, that's one of them, them legendary records that you could literally put on today, and people are going to know that record. And here's the deal: this is this is the thing about the record, Temple. Everybody thinks that it's Al Green's uh, sample. It's not even sample. Mm. Every single instrument was played over in there. Boney, Edgar Boney E, he's a uh, matter of fact, we, we're, we're working on some stuff right now. Uh, me, him, and DJ Burn One. Shout out Burn One. But uh, Boney E, uh, you know, he, he he was playing for Prince and, oh, wow. and different people. He played every single instrument on that track. Now, we did do it with straight from the deck, that cadence. Yes. That's how I agree. Yes. But as far as the track itself, it's not. It, it wasn't a sample. It just sounds so close. You, you see what I'm saying? He's and clearing that up for you guys. Absolutely. And <laughs> and, and, and and I tell people, he was like, well, um, 
Well, can't you get in trouble for that? I, I told artists uh, not too long ago. I said, well, if you go by genre, uh, uh, decades and genres of music, all the artists sounded exactly alike. All the tracks were alike. Go back yes. to the Commodores and, and and Stevie Wonders and stuff. The tracks are all going to be similar. Al Green and, and um, uh, um, what's your boy's name? Uh Mr. Big. Yes. The Temptations. Ten Temptations, uh, yep. All those tracks sounded like, because there's only so many producers doing the tracks. It wasn't like it's is today now. So pretty much all the black artists was having to go through that same circle of producers. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So if you got anything back in the day from Terry Jam, you know, uh, um, you, you had the, pretty much the same sound. Right. You know, so um, I tell everybody, I say, well, no, we didn't sample that. And here's, um, this is what's so funny. T.I., Dro, and Mac Boney, they do it. They, uh, they have redropped it. So they just sent me over the paperwork uh, for the song. They had to come and clear it through us, not Al. Mm. See, they if they could have got around, this is very important for artists. Had they had we sampled that track, yeah. they would have had to go through Al them. Yes or whatever the publishing company that holds the publishing. But I guess they tried that and saw that that ain't even our, uh, our track. So, they, so they, they've been dealing back and forth with me through the attorney. So they've already completed the song. It's fine. I'm going to send it over to you, too. It's called yes. Straight From The A. It's the same thing, the same identical rap. Wow. Uh, Dro come in on the first very tip on the last. Same thing. And... Uh, and I got a little payday from it. No, I know that's right. <laughs> Listen, I know that's right. And that's the goal is to create that residual income that Absolutely. generational wealth where you have something that's so substantial that it lasts forever and the money's constantly coming in and that's what you guys did with your music yeah yeah and and you know something i uh, you know i try to tell a lot of artists too now you know i know it's easy to jump on the fad um and maybe it's because i'm you know i come from the old school you had to be different yes. you had to stand out sounding like somebody in the 90s was equivalent to you <laughs> I don't know, just, you know. It just didn't work. No, 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 no. That was a violation. That was a flagrant <laughs> file. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, time out. You know what I'm saying? Like that, you know, that was gunplay. Yeah. You know, when, I, when the rapper caught you. You know what I mean? You just took my whole style. Right. You know, so now, you know, once one person gets, you know, some motion or something, then everybody jumps on the back one. And here's the thing. When you jump on a bandwagon of another artist like that, you hurt that artist. Man, that is fast. Because what you have done is you have stolen something from them that and you're and, and turn around and feed the people that something that they could only come get from that person. Absolutely. If you understand that. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it does it hurts the overall it hurts that artist. You know, if you got sexy red, then you got sexy blue, then you got sexy <laughs> yellow, then you got sexy, and all of them sound exactly alike. <laughs> and you know, somebody gonna get left out. Absolutely. People need to be original right. when it and, comes to creating their music. Absolutely. And that's the thing, and it's the same with your podcast. It, it sticks out because it's different. Yes. And nothing else looks like it. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Uh um, um, and that's what I that's the only thing I would say about the industry today I you know a lot of the young artists I love like I'm 21 I mean he can do no wrong with me yeah you know future can do no wrong yeah you understand what I'm saying? And, and the list can go on and on with me um and and it kind of changed with them with with that when they ushered in that 2000 maybe 15 and on up when your future and all them hit they they still had their own identity. Yes. And so you can still go back and listen to the music now. 21 don't sound like 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 Future or, or this artist don't sound. But now it's on God. You it's don't know who ridiculous. is who it is. I was listening to the radio. I was hearing somebody rap. And uh, it was... It, it came on. It was uh, what was that boy name? Um, he's a, he locked up now. Uh, we were talking Fujiano. So I'm hearing Fujiano rap. He on a song with somebody, and uh, about ten minutes later, I, you know, I turn to my, my partner. I say, I said, uh, "Damn, this song got that long as hell." <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he said, man, that, uh, what's up? I said, well, Fugiano, because I, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, man, that song went out 10 minutes ago. These are a whole nother artist. We done went through five artists. What? And it still all sounded similar. Now, don't, granted, it's in the mix, so they still might have 
Fujiano ad libs in it. Exactly. But I still couldn't tell the difference in the rappers. Wow. You understand what I'm yep. saying? It wasn't a big difference. I, I said, oh, that sounds like somebody else coming in. Right. Even if you had... If 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 I hear somebody rapping, but they got Pastor Troy in the background, yeah, I'ma still know that's Troy, but I'ma know it's another artist exactly, rapping. Exactly, because the so, sound is so different. It's so different. I was all the same, so I was just like, you know, rap has just went to where it has no originality, and I think that uh, we can lose it, and I think that it is slipping a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I think that foreigners, other races, are taking it more serious. And putting more skill into it. Yeah. Like what we used to have. Now, a lot of us, you know, young black artists feel like they can just throw anything out there and t- tell you anything. And it's, it's becoming slick, degrading to the culture with the quality of some of these artists will send me music and it's it's horrible. Right. Horrible. And they're putting it on the digital platforms and it's not even necessarily what they're talking about, the quality. Mm-hmm. It's not even mixed and they're uploading and distributing it. So it's like it's almost watering it down and degrading to the culture. Well see, see, here here's where where it really goes wrong. Okay, when you're dealing with 15, 16 year old kids, right, that are doing that. Yeah. They record something in the basement real quick, no quality to it, no mix mastering on that, and they dropping it out there. They'll be doing numbers like hell. <sighs> and yes. here, but here's the reason. And here's the, it's the pro and the con. They'll do numbers. If you got your YouTube channel together, if they got it monetized, you can, you know, get up through there with two or three of them things that hit, yeah. make you some nice money. You know, uh, you probably you won't retire, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> but you can make you some nice money. The problem is when they go to these major companies with this, then the companies lose money because there is no real fan base for it. It's exactly. almost a novelty fan base, yep. if, if, if you understand what I'm saying. Yep. The followers aren't loyal to the artist's career. Right. Their loyalty is more with the platform and just the beat of the song. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Yep. So I can like the song and don't even really know who you are and don't oh. care about who you are. Right. When we came up, people want to get, they want to know you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I want to go meet 8 Paul and MJG. No, nah, facts. I want to see a pimp for real. <laughs> I want this too short a real pimp. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, so you want to meet these people and kind of, you know, pick their brain. But now it's just, it's a microwave era. It's in and out. You hot tomorrow, today, tomorrow, nobody knows who you are. And all that hurts all of us. Yes. Because if, if if the bigger and the more consistent rap is uh, from the young people that are that that we have put it in their hands now, the the, the bigger you're gonna be. Yes. The bigger I'm gonna be. The more knowledge they'll have to go back and say, you know what? Let me before I go ahead and sit down with Tampa. Let me find out who she is. Let me see did this woman come from a radio background. Let me know who I'm talking to. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? And people you need to do that. Yes, yes, but they don't do that now because, like I said, it's not the the the, the young artists, especially on my side, that look like me. It's now they don't have respect for the art. They're trying to make a dollar. It's all about clout. How much money can they make? Real fast, right. How many likes and views they can get. It's right. like they're not truly like how you and I are passionate about what we do, how Tia is passionate about mm-hmm. what she does. Mm-hmm. It's not that for them. Like you said, it's a quick buck. Right. And I feel like, you know, with anything, and you know, and my mother used to always tell me this, man, Beverly Bob Shows would tell me, you say, you know, and I'm going to put it as far as a woman go, you know, it, it you know, you may not get everything you want out of a relationship with the woman. But long as you leave the, the woman better than you found her. Mm, that's a good point right there. I love that. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. And that's kind of what I am where I am with hip hop. Yes. You know, when you as a young artist, when you had your run, can you look back and say the 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 culture benefited from what I have put out these last six, seven years, ten years. And if you can live with that And that's exactly what you guys did. You and a lot of these other artists that you named, not even just from Atlanta, from like you said, you liked a lot of Florida music. You know what I'm saying? They came in and like really put that stamp on it. And you can play that music in a club today. And people may not know who the group is, but they've heard that song before. They've heard that song. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about 69 Boys. 69 Uh, Boys. Yeah. 95 South. Yes. Yes. Shout out to JT Money. JT Money. What's happening? Poison Clan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. (laughs) Yes, yes, but... 
I um, I think that Tampa. I think that uh, that the 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 you know the new generation they. I'm starting to see, and I ain't talking about the females. You, that's a whole other subject. But I'm starting to, see, and maybe it's because of the females are running rap. Yes, you understand what I'm saying. And so that's probably making a lot of these younger rappers that I'm starting to hear have to go back in there and get their shit together. No, nah, that's facts because the women, yeah, like they're holding it. Shout out to Glorilla. She's one of yeah. my faves. I yes. love her. I even like Sexy Red too. Like I, you know, I like some of her music. Right. Megan The Stallion. Right. You know, there's some Lotto from here oh, in Atlanta. Yeah, Lotto. I mean, she's she's hosting Birthday Bash. That's huge. This year. That's huge. The first female to ever headline Birthday Bash. It might be 40, 50,000 people out there easily. So, fellas, these ladies giving you a little run for your money. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. So, y'all <laughs> got to get back in the lab, man, and, and get it right. Let me ask you this. In hindsight, looking back to when your music career like first started when you were meeting MC Breed and all these other you know legendary rappers and artists mm -hmm. is there anything if you could go back and change about that time would you or would you leave everything exactly the way it is well um, I mean <sighs> It, are you talking about me personally yeah. or the culture itself? You personally, like, is there anything, any maybe moves you made or things if you're like, you know what, if I could go back and just tweak that a little bit and change your entire path, would you or would you leave it the yeah, way it is? Yeah, I, I definitely would. Be, uh, and it would be, it wouldn't be as much as, you know, the music itself. It would be more of business. Business. You see what I'm saying? But rap was so new at the time that... And it's not just rap. You got to understand, we're coming out of the, the 70s and the 80s where Motown ran stuff and all their artists didn't make any money. Right. And these were humongous groups. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And and 90% of those groups, some of the, the, the biggest records, Peaches and Herbs, or whoever you want to name, or the Temptations, or, you know what I'm saying, or the OJs. Yes. You know, a lot of those, a lot of those artists, those great artists wouldn't make, didn't, didn't make their money. You know, um, like Ronald Isley. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it took Art Kelly. He was down. It took Art Kelly to bring him out, dust him off, reinvent him, call him Mr. Big. Mr. Big, And yeah. put him on some new stuff and put some money in his pocket. You understand what I'm saying? So we're coming off a time where, uh, you know, where, where R&B artists was getting, you know, they was getting the shaft. Yes. And now we're brand new in rap. You know, in the early 90s, most major labels wasn't signing rap record. Rap. Right. You had to almost be independent. There were very few rap artists that were major. Now, New York had a couple going on. Right. Now, LaFace, and, and that's why I love LaFace record, and that's why I love So So Deaf, because they brought that hit to the city. Yes. Said, hey, you know what? Y'all can rap. We can put it out there on a scale of R and B. Shout out to Jermaine Dupree. Absolutely, man. I talked to Jermaine yesterday, man. Jermaine, yeah, I love him. But um, I think if I, I could go back, I would. And you know, it's easy to say that now. You know, what I'm saying I call it Monday morning, Monday morning quarterback. Um, I could easily say that I would have did this. I would have did that. But. I think everything comes when it's supposed to, yeah. and I just didn't have the resources at the time Absolutely. to do it. Or the knowledge to do it. Right. You understand? So only way I would be hard on myself about any situation, if I had the knowledge in that situation and then I didn't apply it. Yes. If I didn't know, I just didn't know. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Times have and, changed. And that's, and that's what anybody, I'll tell anybody that in life, if you did not know, if you did not know something, then don't be don't beat yourself up about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, because oftentimes, like you said, the resources aren't there either. Back then, like now, we have YouTube. Right. We can go to YouTube University. And fix anything. Fix Put an alternate on your car. <laughs> you don't even need a man no more. You know all the songs now. Y'all be saying, "I don't even need a man." Yo, I'm dead. Yeah, go to YouTube. <laughs> throw, throw Replace trans. that carburetor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, like you said, let me ask you this. There's a lot going back. A lot of young aspiring rappers, or just you know musicians. Peer Period out here if they're looking to potentially some of them are super stuck on wanting a deal mm -hmm. which i try to tell them all deals aren't good deals you Absolutely, know you're right what what tips or advice could you offer these young artists who seem so thirsty for a deal well a lot of people are thirsty a lot of artists are thirsty for deals because of a few different reasons but the main one is lack of finances yeah 
That's that's going to be pretty much at the top of to number one. I ain't got the damn money. Yeah. And this cost. Every time I put gas in the car to go do a show, it costs. Yes. And I got to buy outfits for this shit. I got to blah, 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 blah. It's always money. It costs money to breathe. No, facts. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the number one thing. Also, the number two thing I would say, lazy. Mm, there's a lot of it's that. It's a lot more work you have to do. You just talked about it before the camera came on. I got tired of everybody with my shit playing. The hold on, it'll be ready in, uh, the next Thursday. <laughs> so I got up. I got my own cameras. You got your own space. You said I'm gonna do it myself yes. because I'll do the work. You know what I'm saying? With, with great reward comes great responsibility. Yes. And um, a lot of people don't. They don't have that. Ain't nobody trying to do, man. Tell me, don't want to. I ain't trying to do all that shit. It's too much. I'd rather Tampa do the work. Exactly. You're right. They want someone. Else. They want to pawn it off into somebody else. Correct. Then, and they don't. Oftentimes, don't want to pay. They. Right. It's free. Right. No, it's not free. Our time is invaluable. Like right. you can't put a price tag on our time because we can never get it back. Can never get it back. But like I say, yeah, I say you know, lazy is the second thing with a lot of artists. It, you know, uh, it's a mentality from the hood. You know, I mean, look where we come from. Get rich quick. You know what I'm saying? So why I go to, you know what I'm saying, law school when I can, you know what I'm saying, try to sell a block. You know what I'm saying? That's just the mentality that we, we a lot of us have came from. And it's not just black folks now. It's a class. Yes. I tell people that all the time. Me being in the rap industry for so long and being all over the world, I can tell each, everybody out there, there are black Chinese, there are black white folks, there are black everything. Yes. You understand? There are... I have guys. I call them. I call them uh, black nicks. They act just like white uh, red nicks, yeah. and they identify with them. One of my one of my did partners. You, did I you got say one, black nicks? Yeah, you know you got the red neck and the black neck. They both right there together. That's you know? funny. But their 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 interest is Kendall spirits. Yeah. So. So my black neck partner, he identified more with the red neck partner because they got a lot in common. Um, yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yep. One of them a racist. Exactly. You know what I'm Absolutely. They just like the fish. They just like the dip. They just like the yeah. But it's not. It's not just a white thing. No. I, I know blacks that are like that too. I know some. You know. But my thing is, man. I think that um, these young guys, like I said, get rich quick schemes, trying to get it. You know, uh, if I damage, you know, what I'm saying the industry, if I had to step on some toes, if I had to be very disrespectful to some of these, some of the old artists, you know. Um, you know, if I have to call them old, uh, you know, they, you know, uh, me and B-Hot was talking the other day, and, he, and I was one of those young artists talking about, uh, called the old artist, uh, Terry Hubman rap. Terry <laughs> Hubman rappers. <laughs> yeah, that's how they identify no, all, the, he did. all the old heads. They used to say old heads. Wow. Yeah, but. Um, I prefer an OG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call yeah. me uh, an OG. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, we're going to have to get to the point. Here's the deal. And this is in life. This is with everything in life. You're going to have to get to a point to where the young and the old are going to have to come together because we as OGs need to know what they know. I agree. It's vital. But... They need to know what we know. Then we'll be good. And when I told you it's like that in life, I have a lot of white friends. Yeah. Got friends of all nationalities. And I got I got black partners that ain't never been off Candler Road. They they ain't been to the West Side. I'm talking about don't lived in the hood all their life. So out of their eyes. You know they 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 still living back in it's slavery. It's boxed in for yeah, them. Yeah, you understand yeah. what I'm saying. And I and and I could be in a room full of you know what I'm saying my brothers and you know like well, you know wake you be out there you know you dealing with all the white folks and you know you dealing with the Jews and you you yeah. you dealing with uh, uh, this people and and that people and I would and I tell them this all the time I say we're all human. How do we know that while we're trying to all stay segregated, separated, all this, that I don't need what you need. You don't need what I need. You need what I need. Yes. And, th and these are genes and stuff, too. Yes. And it's some deep shit. No, nah, fact. You understand what I'm saying? They're to make, you know, a thousand years from now, it won't be no color. I just had this conversation with someone like two weeks ago. I agree with that because people are intermingling so much mm -hmm. that... 
I, I pray that it gets to that where it's literally just one race because it will eliminate the crazy racism and stuff that's out there. So Absolutely. I agree with you on so, that. And, and, I, and I say that to, you know, to pivot and to rap. The old and young. Yeah. We're going to have to get together. These uh, young girls, Sexy Reds and all them, you got to go back and holler at, you know, Lil Cam's. Yes. And Foxy Brown. Yes. And Mia X. Mm. You know, Lady of Rage. Yes. You know what I'm saying? They still can rap, you know. Um, and that's kind of why I see it right now. But I, I think it'll, you know, our people, we're resilient. And when I say all our people, I'm talking about Kendall Spirits. Yes. Us industry people. Yes. Us, like you said, it's passionate about rap. And they don't have a color on it. I think that we we will we will get to the to point to where you will be able to be an OG and be just as relevant. Yes. Let's watch that. Let me ask you this: Do you feel like social media coming in? Because for social me, it's a bittersweet. There's a lot of good things that come from it, but there's a lot of weirdo things because people use it in the wrong way per se. Well, do you feel like social media, like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, etc., has helped? The music industry? Absolutely. It definitely has helped. It's, it's, it, you just, I mean, you ask the question and answer the question. Yeah. Because it has helped and helped hurt. Uh, like I say, you can, you know, do a song tonight and you can change your life tomorrow. Yes, going viral. I mean, you would, you would, anybody that's, that's not a hater it's going to root for that. Yeah. If I see a, you know, a guy or a female that I'm like, and you know, I, and I see people on there trying to, you know, rap now at 60. That's a good thing. Yeah. You know, cause I tell, you know, this is what I tell the young people. If social media has got it to where there's no age limit on rap, no age limit on anything, you know, you can, you can, you can do it pretty much what you want. I will say this to haters that'll say that, well, you too old to rap. I will say, well, damn, is, are you too old to be a plumber? Are you too old to put a roof on a house? Right. I see guys out that's the. I see guys that'll be on the internet and call you too old to rap, and they out there busting concrete on the thing <laughs> like this, and they're 60 years old. Right. I said, well, what's this harder? No, nah, facts. I'm in the AC rapping, talking. You were out there doing manual labor yeah, in 100 Yeah, but I'm the one weather. that's too old to rap. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, I think that you know the internet is 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 excellent. I don't want to go back. Yeah, me either. When we when we didn't have the internet, you had to stick out. <laughs> right, and first we had dial up. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, that was ugly. It was <laughs> getting knocked off every time a phone call every came time in. Phone, you Stop know, calling, <laughs> man. So I, I, right now, I think that the, I love the you know the internet. Uh, I'm able to directly talk to people that that have my same you know energy that that yes. you know are in my or people that maybe not have my energy but they can help me. Yes, you understand what I'm saying? So. Um, I mean, it's the best thing that ever happened to us. But now, like you said, at the same time, it has given the culture attention deficit disorder. Um, because a lot of people won't stop and take time to hear, listen no more because it's so fast. Well, nigga, it, it's, it was 5,000 songs dropped today. No, you know facts. what I'm saying? So uh, what do I need to sit here and waste two minutes on your shit? You understand what I'm saying? Yep. So it's it, it's both ways, but I think that the, the good is here and the bad of it is I here. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. And I'm the type of person that no matter what happens in life, I always pull out a positive from it. Mm -hmm. It could seem like the worst situation in the world, but half I full instead of I, half empty. Exactly. I dig in and say, okay, what positive can I get from this? Is it a lesson that I learned mm -hmm. or is it, you know, just something? Mm -hmm. And I think if more people had that type of mentality, things would be better. Right. Definitely. Right. We are never too old to do anything and I think that when people's real young they look at people like us who are in the same age bracket and mm -hmm. they might think we're old when they get our age they're not going to feel that way at all because I don't feel my age right I, I feel good you know yeah, what I'm saying oh yeah 20 what 22 I'm tw yeah I'm 22 okay. <laughs> it's my industry 10, 23. age yeah 22 you know 22 and 23 I'm the only one in here and I got the gray and stuff y'all women don't get the gray y'all play the gray do y'all no women don't play the gray do I, I love the song but the women boy, tell me like you need to tell you need to uh, tell your 
bend when you go up and up. I said, they already know I'm old as well. I like it, though. I think, yeah. to me, it makes someone look like they are distinguished. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Distinguished. Like, the distinguished gentleman. Look at him. Yeah. He got a whole model look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're absolutely right. So, uh, to jump into something else, I know you recently were honored at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium mm -hmm. um, when Atlanta was celebrating 50 years of hip-hop, which 50 years is still very young. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In, in music, in the music world. Congratulations on that. Thank you. What was that experience like for you? It was great. Uh, and and I want to, and I want to, before I even tell you about that experience, you just said something. You said that it was, it's only been 50 years and that's very, very young. Yes. Right? Here's a thing that I want to throw out while it's on my mind. You are right. 50 years is very, very young. That's why the culture doesn't know what to do with us. A hundred percent. Because we're the first generation of rappers that have gotten old. Yes. So did, we're we're as OGs now. We are setting the 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 path for these same artists that are calling us old heads now. They're gonna turn around and benefit and be treated a lot better when they sit here at my age. I agree. Because of what I'm doing right now. Such a valid point. You are a hundred and. 10% right. Right. I agree. You know, they probably don't get that no, now. You know facts. what I'm saying? And, but back to the Mercedes Benz Stadium, you know, I got the call. Uh, uh, shout out to Hannah. You know what I'm saying? Hannah uh, said, you know, they, we're going we're gonna to honor y'all at, uh, at, the, at the football game. It was a lot of great artists. Some of, you know, uh, most of them I, I did know, but I hadn't seen in a, in a while. Yeah. Um, and just being there with all the guys, it just felt like. You know, and seeing yourself up on the screen, it felt like, you know what, hey, even if I didn't get everything I wanted out of this, it's only oh, 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 one percent of motherfuckers that hit that screen. Facts, a hundred percent. You know, and that in itself, I won already. Agreed. I feel like oftentimes getting honored is bigger and more recognizable than receiving an award. Right. W awards right. are great. We right. all love them. You know what I'm saying? But right. to be honored yes man that's like a pivotal moment right there because it just you probably see your whole career pass before you at that very moment mm -hmm. like man i just did all this for the last 25 years or however long it's been mm -hmm. and i'm being honored for it right that's absolutely and, that, and it and i saw and it was a lot, it was some rappers that was there they was in tears and here's the thing it didn't matter we all in the same room yeah it didn't matter if you were tip if you were CeeLo, if you were Young Dro, if you were Ghetto Mafia, if you were whoever, everybody felt the same about being honored, like what you just said. Yes. Whether you was the richest rapper in the room or whether you the brokest rapper in the room, there was at that particular time right there, it was, a, it was, it was definitely a brotherhood and everybody was, I mean, Tip was just as happy as anybody up in there. It's like an ultimate he sat, high. He sat up in that thing the whole time. He ain't miss his. He wasn't going nowhere. I'm waiting for mine. I'm waiting for mine. And this is a guy that, you know, that sat on, sat down with me on the podcast and told me, I don't want to be more famous. Mm. You know, this is what this man told me. Yeah. I'm not out here trying to get more famous. I'm out, here, I'm out here now trying to make, I want my sons to be famous. There you go. I want my daughters to be famous. I've had my run. But seeing him standing there, him and Dro and, and all of us there, I mean, and, you know, it was so many different artists that, that, of course, when I look over and I see, you know, Kilo, uh, like I say, you know, Raheem and them, the, the, the MC Shadi, the guys before me, I felt great for them more than even myself because i know what they went through before us yes even uh, tougher and yeah and rap grew see rap has grown i tell this to young kids yeah you're gonna you're gonna be bigger rap has grown it's bigger because of us yes we make it big. it grew yes it did that's, and that's in any business you think that the if, Michael Jordan, back when he played for Chicago Bulls, to get $30 million, <laughs> he, $30 million, he was the man. Yes, he was. These kids are coming out of school now and getting $100 million shoe deals before they ever even play a game. Blows my mind. You understand what I'm yes. saying? Michael Jordan had to get out of basketball and become, and make shoes and and and, and business and all kind of stuff to get the way he had. And he's done a great job. Right. LeBron almost made a billion dollars on the court. I we mean, ain't even talking about off the court. 
Can we borrow a dollar? <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? You know, Tiger Woods made uh, almost made a billion dollars on the field. Doing something he loves. Doing something he loves. Yeah. So, but, you know, Dr. J was, you know, making $2 million back then. Yeah. You know, how you think he feels? Right. And then they was in the ABA. They had to they had to go out here on the small buses and and crank this league up. Yes. One thing I like about sports is they go back and get their legends. They have a players union. Yes. So they go back and if you was a player that is going on right now with my with, with Andre Rising. Matter of fact, I'm in that movie in that documentary. Okay. It's um What's the name of the documentary again? Wide Open. Um, but I'm in, yeah, I'm in that documentary, uh, Behind I. And, you know, I used to run with Andre Rising and, and you know, and, you know, TLC, Lisa, them from back in the day when Dion was here. Um, and, and I think that Andre right now, and we, me and Till was talking about this, I'm trying to watch my words. <laughs> I think that. He didn't get what he's supposed to get monetarily in the in the NFL when yeah. he played. But now they're coming back and getting him the 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 players union. You know, of course it's great his wife and family and stuff, but the league has came back and got him and they're embracing him. And then they're starting to pick him up. And and not just throw him to the to the, you know, throw him in the trash like a lot of the old school rappers have yes. been done. You know, and that's what I want to kind of get the industry to. I think that the Atlanta Falcons honoring uh, 50 years of hip hop with us legends empowered us. It gave us the credibility that we needed. Yes. For, for younger artists and stuff to listen. I'm a 50 year hip hop legend. Uh, yes. Because that carries weight. <laughs> it does. You understand what I'm saying? If, 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 if Arthur Blank can listen, you can listen. And it's frustrating because I'll ask a lot of these young artists that I sit down with, I'll name some of these, you know, artists that were out in the mm -hmm. era when you first came out and they have no idea who it is. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just like, to me, it's almost like disrespectful. You have to pay homage to the people that came before you. Right. And open these doors for you, people like Ghetto Mafia and yeah. all these other artists you name. But you know what paying homage is? People think paying homage is you coming to me and bowing down or and you. It's not so that no. at all. Homage is what you just said. When I ask you about Outcast, you know who it is. You don't have to jump and go to a high mountain and say, I listen to all they songs. Right. Or, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, when I ask you, do you know Outcast? You know, who is that? And you sitting in, in, in Tampa's radio station. <laughs> Yo. You sitting up in here with Tampa in her radio station. She asks you who Outcast is, and you have no idea. Especially if they're from Atlanta. That's even more frustrating. Absolutely. And, you know, <laughs> uh, we didn't do that. Now, you know, when I used to be in the backseat with my mama, you know, going to the grocery store, uh, and she has on Lionel Richie and, and whoever <laughs> else ever. Don't get me wrong. I wanted to listen to Slick Hello. Rick. You know, yeah, but I still knew the name. You. I could get in any circle as when I was 18 or 19 and you asked me who that artist is. I knew who the OJs was. Now, don't get me wrong. I wasn't like my mother them. I didn't. I didn't. I wanted to listen to rap. Yeah. You don't but know I their song for song. I knew who they were. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you just said, some of these artists sit up here now talking about their rapper. A sound just like a person that they don't even know who it is. Exactly. I say, I, 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 I tell some artists, I say, you don't even, you sound like so and so. Who is that? It don't been passed down. The style don't been passed down so much. When you got it, you don't even know where it originated where it from. Where originated at? Yeah. So I think that you know that right now with 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 the latter factions to get back to that and close that out. That they actually gave a lot of you know um, they give a lot of validity to us, man, to be able to go out here and do the work that's needed to be done because we all do work in all parts of life for the next generation. That's Absolutely. just about, that's the bottom line. We want to leave it better than. And we found it. It's just like raising our kids. We want our kids to do better than us. Mm -hmm. It's no different than the same thing with this industry. We want to leave a legacy so it's people are able to level up and come up off of what we've yeah, done, our hard work. Yeah, and eat, and eat later on. You exactly. Know, so. yeah, but I think, you know what, we got we got great kids, and they, they'll be all right. They, 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 you know, our kids are smart, and our kids are passionate, too. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, doing a lot of stuff with the, uh, with the you know, with the George Floyd stuff and stuff. I saw a lot of young brothers out there, and I'm yes. saying, I'm talking 15, 16, 17, that were doing stuff that our ancestors had to do back then, but they were, they were a little more bound. 
all that. No, nah, facts. I, you know, I, I was high behind. The, you know, I was doing the Chris Tucker behind a couple of the buildings and stuff. You know, it was a lot of young guys. My son was ready to go. Yeah. You know, like pop. You just sit there. I got this. You know. So, um, I th- our kids are gonna be all right. They're smart. They, they're courageous. Yes. You know, it just it just take us to you know what I'm saying. Sometimes you gotta you know what I'm saying. Pull the bull by the horn and say, listen, and. I think they will. I agree. Let's talk about this new record you got with CeeLo Green. It's called Break the Bank. Yes. Let's yes. let's let's dive in. First of all, who produced it? Uh DJ Burn one. DJ Burn one. DJ did a lot of, you know, stuff uh for you know, he's He's a, he's a legendary uh, producer. Yes. Here. Um, he did a lot of stuff with Gucci for some of the young people that you know that uh, know Gucci um, and a lot of <laughs> a lot of di- a lot of different artists. But uh, I got with DJ Burn one and uh, D- DJ Burn one still is from the era of playing music. Yeah. So they have a band, the Five Points Music Bakery, and it's you know it's a lot of them, and they playing guitars, and they they still, but they but they're. The, the beats that they're producing are still still hip. Yeah. You know? And I'm trying to, with that record, it's uh, it's called Break the Bank with CeeLo. CeeLo, man, showed me so much love. I talked to him yesterday. I thank him every time I talk to him. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, I've already, if I died today, I'm happy. Yeah. Now, it, for me, it's just building on to when you pour me up. If if, if you see, I, I got a new song with Daz and um, MC8 coming out. Mm. Uh, that's for the older, you know, older G's. I got one with Yin Gang Twin with Kane. That's I'm going to drop that next week. The I video, love that. absolutely. But but uh, to me. It's just about, I'm holding on to all this stuff. It's about, now when you pull up Get On My, I did it with Get On My. If I did enough, I'm happy. I don't need to hear myself. Now, if I do hear myself on the radio again, I'm not going to say, hey, take me off the radio. <laughs> but I'm not, th- I'm not. that's not what my passion is now, to be on television again, to be on the radio. I was the first nigga on BET out of this city. Man. You understand what I'm saying? With a video out of this city. MTV too, I think. Because our cast came out just an inch after they was on that Christmas album Players Ball, but I think we came out maybe that January. You see what I'm saying? Yep. But I was if I wasn't the first, I was one of the first rappers on major television. Man. So I've already did that. I know what it feels like. One of the first artists to do my type of music on a major radio station. Right. So I already know what it feels like. I can't, I can't, you know, um, I can't get hyped off that again. My thing now is doing stuff with with artists that I that I admire. I think that came from Yin Yang Twins, one of the greatest artists, and, and I know him personally. Uh, I'm talking about Sing. Kane, can, Kane and CeeLo can get together and do a, a, a album singing, and most people don't even, well, people know about CeeLo, but Kane is a beast. You know, and they can get together and do a whole blues album, and it would be fire. Man. We talking some Teddy Swim type <laughs> shit. Some, you know what I'm saying? Some, some Chris Stapleton shit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, um, for me now, it's just going and getting artists. Uh, you know, I, t- I was telling Brian when I said, "Man, I'm finna, you know, do uh, put MC8 on that song with me and Daz." I went and got the verse from Daz. I said, "I'm finna put eight on there, man." You know, because I grew up watching, you know, what I'm saying Minister Society, and he was the first thing I ever saw with the A hat on. Yep. You know, what I'm saying the Braves hat on in the movie. You know. Um, and, it, and you know, I I, I just give you know, him E forty too short out of my dad. I, I grew up JT the bigger figure. I love those guys, yeah. and uh, so I've always wanted to do a song with them. And I got that song done. That's kind of what I'm, I'm I'm moving my way through the industry. I'm I'm to tip all of them. They all gonna come in. Yes. And and you know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put together twenty or thirty of them, and that's gonna be the catalog. And if I die tomorrow, my kids will have that right there, and it'll hold value to it. Yes. That's 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 the thing. Like you know. I'm I'm, um, actually, when I drop this song with Kane next week and Planet Pete, shout out to Planet Pete uh, from DSGB. But once I drop, you know, these next four or five songs, I am going to get out and start doing some shows off of them and, and push them. But my goal is to get these songs with artists that I'm going to have 40 or 50 of these songs right here because my music is going to stand the test of time. And I might not reap the rewards off of but I guarantee you there's going to be some happy barbers, some happy little wickets later on in life say, I'm glad Grandpops did that. Nah, that is facts because you are literally bringing in other like legends that paved the way. And 
I don't know too many artists that are doing that, that are like, that were in the era that you were in, you're still making music, that are di- kind of digging back to the artists that were in their era and collabing with them today in 2024. Exactly. Who's doing that? No, they, if somebody does do a collab, they're trying to collab with a younger artist. Exactly. I get it, and yeah, I get it. Keep you know, it. I'm not going to, you know, uh, say no to a 21 verse, you know, but my thing is that's not, Really, when people look from the outside looking in, probably see me. They probably think that that, that I'm thirsty for fame again, or I'm thirsty trying for trying to reinvent to, himself. Not, yeah, my, I'm thirsty for. I'm trying to leave something. First of all, I never um, with with the Galaxy Wick thing. I was uh, in a group called Ghetto Mafia. So Ghetto Mafia is the name, it's the brand. Me myself, I ain't shit as far as Galaxy Wick goes. That's not a brand. I just this song that I just dropped with CeeLo is the first song I ever dropped. Under Galaxy Wig. That's a totally new tab. Just like when CeeLo came out as Nas Barkley. Yeah. That ain't CeeLo. It ain't the same. So I'm trying to prove something up under Galaxy Wig because I've already done it under Ghetto Mafia. Um, and like I say, once I get all these songs up on the Galaxy Week, my thing is to be able to show, you know, the kids, the, you know, the nieces, the nephews, hey, hey. Pops had, goddamn, we own everything. Yeah. We own every song. If, I, if we want to take your songs and wipe our ass with it, we can. You know what I'm saying? You but own we it. own it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have ownership of all my own music. Man, that's probably something you wish you would have known back in the day, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, now, don't get me wrong. You know, I was with a lot of people are coming up here with their sob stories. I made good money. Yeah. Uh, advances were was ridiculous. We were getting nice, nice advances. And... I still make a little money here and there off the body. So, but what if I had gotten eighty nah, percent of the facts. money? Yes. I did all the work. The song had already blown before for Sony and Bob and Ernie came in and got the record. Right, absolutely. So if I knew what I knew then, I would have masterpieced it then. There you go, a hundred. But you could have stayed independent, you know, and, yeah. and made your own money. Right, 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 it. right. But you know, they come come to us, give us a quarter million dollars. People, we, we jump good. right on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. What, what you were talking about earlier? God, shit, a quarter million dollars. <laughs> if I was already thinking about busting Tupac and breed upside the head for eighty thousand dollars, <laughs> you knew I could. You couldn't keep me off for a quarter million dollars. Somebody put a check in front of me. I was like, man, we'll read the contract later. No nah, we'll, facts. Read. So let me go cash this check real quick exactly so you know <laughs> hey you ask me what i do it all over again yeah i still take the two hundred fifty thousand right now <laughs> you know if somebody got two hundred fifty thousand dollars for me out there right now i will take <laughs> it you know but uh i don't i don't have no regrets man i'm 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 i, I feel great i'm blessed you know and uh and i feel good with, with what i did i did it i did the best that i could with what the tools that i had um I've never had a major record deal. Mm. Now, I've had major distribution. Right. A lot of people don't understand the two. I was never signed directly with Sony. They just distributed the music. Yes. I was still with an independent company. And even though Bob don't be at the time, he still was independent. Right. You know what I'm saying? He just... Um, they were just throwing stuff, you know, here and there, out there. But I was never with a major label. A lot of the major artists uh, from my era, I was making more money than them. Yeah. Because I was independent. So we was able to go get, you know, you know, get a quarter million. I get a quarter. That's, that's a half a million dollars in a sign of bond. I was there with, with, with cast and them until they got to a certain point. Right. You know what I'm saying? I saw the, the advances that, that LaFace and, and Sosa Def and Arista and all them was giving out. And I, me and Nino were getting it, <laughs> you know, compared to that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But they were getting that machine behind the them. Machine. The machine longevity yes. to 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 later on. So I didn't know about that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, shit, when well, they getting thirty thousand dollars, I'm getting a quarter million. Why would I want to be over there with that? And then understand that fifteen years from now, they're gonna still be making money. Exactly. Like, yeah, because of you know what this machine is gonna do for them. And in the midst of that, the machine is gonna try to blackball y'all out a little bit. But like, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are absolutely right, 100%. Yeah. And nowadays, a lot of artists are creating their own independent labels and doing partnerships with some of these major labels. Absolutely, and that's what I have right now uh, with uh, with the stuff I got. I just being distributed through Virgin, through okay. um, through Renee. 
So Renee uh, is, um, God damn it, she going to kill me too. I hope you <laughs> edit this part of it. New Age Distribution through Virgin. Got you. So they're putting out, they're putting the uh, record out. I'm still responsible for all the marketing. I still got to come. They ain't calling, they ain't called you and told you, <laughs> hey, we need to get Wicked on the show. <laughs> That's the difference being directly if I was with Virgin. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I'm still doing all the work but uh, myself, but I'd rather do that. Yeah. I'd rather get out here, you know, beat the streets with, with, with some of the great people around me, man. I got Tia around me. Uh, you know, shout out to Greg Street, Be High. You know what I'm saying? DJ Jelly. You know what I'm saying? All these are people around me that I can call every single day and they're going to make something shake for me. You I see what it. I'm saying? So, um, I think that with the team that I have now around me with the distribution, uh, with the, and it's major distribution, that, you know, I'm just sitting back and hoping one of these things pop. You know, and I'm going to drop into they pipe one, one of them pop. We're manifesting it right here, right now. It will. Absolutely. We're putting it out there to the universe. That's right. <laughs> metaphysics. No, nah, facts. One more thing I do want to talk about is Beehive ATL. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a part of the podcast. You're co-hosting. Yes. When did that situation come together? Because he has a great, great platform. Yes, he does. And and um, it was actually, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story what happened Um I actually had came to be high a, a friend of mine and, and I loved him. He was like, he was our version and decatur of uncle Phil on uh fresh Prince. Yeah. <laughs> His name was Phil. And I think you knew Phil. He was in a wheelchair. Yeah. He, he passed. Yep. Phil had Lakefront studios. We all grew up together. Phil decatur So Phil, he was at the time, you know, I was at a point where I had, you know, I don't stop rapping. I wasn't doing none of that shit. I worked. Yeah. You know, I've had plenty of different jobs, and that's another yeah. thing we'll talk about another time. With these rappers get your get up and get a get some get a job. You, I work overnight for five years and was still going to club and and, and look like I'm Michael Jackson in there, and then leave from there and take my ass and to go work. to work. Yeah, there's you nothing wrong with that. You're right. It humbled me also. Yeah, but um, yeah, goddamn um, uh, what was I at now again? Before We're talking about be high with be high. Uh, I go field takes me. To be high, he takes me and Nino. Now, at this time, this is crazy. This shows how the universe works. I'm going to give you some stuff you can use. I'm mad at T.I. like a motherfucker at this time. Tip the man all around everywhere. He's saying he started trap music. I know anybody that's from here is not a rap route that you can go back. You can go 1992, draw the line. I started young, slanging rocks in the trap. Sting a step up. You find every single song, indicator. I remember trapping, laid at the stove, on the, on the hospital beds. Any, any song, everybody knowing us for that music. Here. Yes. And so he's saying this stuff around town and stuff, and I hadn't hollered at him. That's another thing, too, with y'all rappers, man. Sometimes talk before you push sand on social media Absolutely. Or, or go around and spend venom on a person. I agree. Because at this particular time, I don't know that, I'm, that Tip is a fan of mine also. But I ain't seeing that. All I'm seeing is I'm fucked up and he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? That's yeah. my mindset. Yeah. And you're doing these interviews, you're sitting down with Tampa and, and then she asks you your favorite group and you, you say everybody but me. Yeah. So I got a problem with you. I agree. So I go up to Be High and they have put a documentary out. It was some it was I can't remember the documentary now, but they were talking about it was it, Atlanta, how Atlanta was uh, made or some old bullshit. They talked about every rapper in this motherfucker but me. So I was 38 high. So I told B. I want to come on there and cuss the city out. I was going to do the Cat Williams <laughs> then. I was freezing because all these niggas used to be at my show. Yeah, Aaron, everybody. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going there, but I'm just not that type of nigga. Yeah. But I can check you in a certain kind of way. So I, I go up. And it's me and Nino, and, you know, we talking and stuff. And I got a little heated, but I noticed that with B. High, what I liked about him, he knew I was hot. He let me say anything I wanted. He let me say it. He knew he was going to edit it out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and so he let certain little stuff go. Yeah. Um, he let me get off of certain stuff. But if it got to where it was borderline that he thought that it could go another kind of way because yeah. I was that hot. He didn't put none of that stuff in there. Yeah. Thank God, either. And I remember leaving with Phil, and Phil was like, you know, Wick, I know you the story. I, I, I know you started, and there's, there's, there's a million motherfuckers know you started. But 
I, you know, I don't think that 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 was a great idea. You come off as a hater for one. Yeah. The man has millions of fans, so it's like you're assassinating, you know, the hero. Yes. I had to learn that later on now. That's why I tell people now, you talking about, you say something about me, it ain't even about me. It's Decatur going to be mad with you because <laughs> I am a symbol of Decatur. Yes. So when you say fuck wicked, De- Decatur niggas are going to take that person that you saying fuck. A hundred percent. I love Decatur. Right. And I didn't think of like that back then. This man got fans that yeah. love him. Yes. So... I say my, I speak my piece, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, t- the time, you know, it, it goes on. I get a call. I don't think b is going to fuck with me again after that. I get a call from, I was talking to Rashad every day. Me and Rashad was talking. Rashad was interested in my story. And Big Lim, who was with Goody Mob, Big Lim passed to RIP Big Lim. He's the one be having those ATL hats on the table that you see Cass and all them wearing. Yeah. So... Uh, I get a call from Behind. He says, hey, can you be down here in 30 minutes? I said, well, down well, well, yeah. Can I, now? I ain't talking to Behind on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, I'm down at Patchwork Studio. I, you know, I just need I said, bet. So me and my partner jumped in the car. I get down. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, this is my second time seeing this nigga. So he like, man, I need you to, you know, fill in, do 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 an episode with me. He said, I had three interviews lined up. At this particular time, Beehive was paying Patchwork for the room in there. Right. Because he was going through a thing with hot. Right. So he say, all three of the groups, they backed out on me. I said, for real? He's like, yeah, I said, he says this. Now that's a coincidence, not one person. All three of them had something of the order. One didn't answer. The other one, the mama fell out. It was something. It's always something, right? Yeah. And so I said, well, shit, let's run it. So I told this story. I told him about Too Short. That I had went to Too Short's house. I don't know if you've heard this story before. I go to Too Short's house. This was at the... One of my albums had them came out. So Short fucked with us. He he actually there was a girl named Robin that used to work there. Robin called and said, Too short wanna holler at y'all. You know what I'm saying? He like I said, bet. So he was staying off Cascade Gilbert Forest. I go around the back. When I when we go in the door, you know, I brought my five niggas with me. Yeah. I wanted everybody to know I was with too no. short. <laughs> so I get in, you go around short. Short had a uh, fucking mansion back then. I'm talking about it was it was an estate. Yeah. So we go around the back, I come in. He has a pool table downstairs. Mom them stayed upstairs at the studio and the pool table downstairs. So I'm waiting for this nigga to come down. I'm like, he's taking an hour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we sitting around. I don't want to rap. I don't want to. I want to see this nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I grew up on Too Short. And I want to see him in the flesh and touch him. Pex. And so he finally comes down. By the time he comes down, we're shooting pool. We're on the pool table, me and my homies. Now... I am, a, if you don't know this, I am a pretty good damn pool player. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm a pretty good pool player. Especially if I, you know, if I have been shooting, going around. I used to go to clubs and kind of hustle a little bit. Yeah. Shoot a little pool here and there. And I could tell, I had to, I had to know who not to fuck with. Right. <laughs> so, uh, he comes down. We shooting pool. And at this time, my whole... Life savers is in my pocket. I might got, I was the real three stacks at that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my old life savers is on me. What you see is what I got. I ain't got a bank account. So we play up $20, you know, talking to shit, the fellas, you know, we flex acting like, you know, cause it's short, you know, we rolling blunts, we got them cooling. So short come out, he all cool and stuff. He goes, oh, so y'all shoot. I say hell yeah, everybody. You know I'm the one that because I'm the man out of the out of out of my boys right. with me. So he said, like, "Shit, you want to shoot?" We said, "We can shoot one now." Short had his own the, the house sticks. Mm. So I got my stick. I'm feeling good about my stick. Cause stick everything that matters. That, yeah. that stick matters. It yes. got to be. You got to be in here with it. <laughs> you know. And um, so I'm shooting. So we started shooting for maybe. Ten dollars a game. Short. I'm not a a retard because I know pool. 
And I can tell when somebody is hustling me most of the time. Yeah. But when I think I was clouded by it was too short. Yeah. And so we shooting. So I beat short one or two games. About 12, I won about $20. <laughs> and for some reason, I don't know if I'm drunk, if I'm high. I was just like, shit, you know, the great idea of I can hustle and maybe get. Because <laughs> at that age, you got to understand every dollar counts. Yes, it you does. Know, I'm, taking, I'm riding around with bombs of weed. <laughs> and, 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 so it just in case wherever I'm at, I got to play. Yeah. So me being up in too short career with this man right here, I'm looking instantly as... I don't beat that nigga right here. I don't know. got me. I, I can juice him right fast. You know, hit <laughs> right. him. You know what I'm saying? So he goes, you want to uh, shit? We uh, shit. You know, you talk shit, nigga. We, we do 100 a game. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm like, damn. You know, I got my little money on my deal to show. Because I was out at the time. Yeah. I was just getting out. I said, 100 a game now. You know, I got my whole life savings on me. I, I wasn't thinking about 100 a game. Yeah. You know, these fives and tens, cool. <laughs> I was thinking that if I lost 100, that's when I was going to get out. Yes. I said, man, fuck that shit. I don't whoop short anyway, man. The man, he all right. He all right. Put that $100 down. Time I put the $100 down. Remember I told you at the house stick? Yes. He brought a stick out. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh at him. <laughs> He brought a stick out and screwed the stick together, oh. and it made what the bottom half was the girl belly button down on the stick. Wow. And the top half was the titties out. Wow. He had a custom. I swear to God, the two short pushed the little button on it, and the girl said, Bitch, <laughs> we got us one. <laughs> he whooped my ass. I didn't get another shot for three games. Oh, what? Too short is a pool shot. I don't told this story before, but. I told that story on Be High, and it went ape shit. Everybody was, they was just laughing. So when I told him, I pushed the button, and, and it lit up, and she said, bitch. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it went ape shit. And from that right there, because I think I might have bust 100000 on that. After that right there, I was like, you got to come back. Mm. And then I would come back, you know, and, you know, do little episodes with him. We started to see that we had like a chemistry. Chemistry was there. Um, it started out with Beehive and I, myself as him kind of interviewing me about stuff because yeah. he had to get all of my stories first. Yes. And I don't hear about five stories. But I'm going to give you one for just for you. Yeah. You know, but I gave him the eight ball to him when they tried to kill me, <laughs> you know, in Houston. Um, but I gave him a, a bunch of different stories. And after that was over, I knew that we had to do something else because I have no more stories to give you. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Even if I do got two or three that I'm holding because of maybe this, maybe I don't want to talk about LL or maybe I don't want to, you know, yet. yeah. Then where, am I, where are we going to go from here? So, you know, I watch, I have been a faithful, I used to play basketball in high school. I even played AAU. Um, but I used to watch Stephen A. Smith. Uh, you know, first take cold pizza back in the day when they first started. Stephen A. Smith wasn't on there yet. It was a Woody, uh, I forget Woody's name. He's a white dude. Him and Skip Bayless and them. And they was doing, you know, it was more like not an interview. It was more like debating the sports itself. Yeah. Yes. And I was like, damn, that was fascinating to me. Like, you know, because I was so used to. How the news does, uh, you know, the Atlanta Braves today, they want to, you know what I'm saying, the eight hours, and the, you know, that yeah. shit, you know what I'm saying? But to see somebody out there, man, LeBron ain't shit. <laughs> you know, that reminded me of of coming to America, the barbershop. Exactly. Talk. You understand right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And a lot of people didn't catch on to that, and I watched it, and I saw it, you know what I'm saying, how how they were doing it, and how, you know, because Stephen A. Smith, he, he, I don't agree with a lot of stuff he, that he does, he, that he says. Uh, I don't know him personally, but I do know that he start him and Skip started some shit with debating those sports topics, and a lot of people, whether they know or not, this is where these podcasts are going. It's, it's gonna have to have we, we when, when Behind and I are talking about something, and I and you know, and I and I let Behind know that I will take credit for this. I tell him we don't have to agree on everything. I say even if we agree on a subject. There are people out there that don't agree on that particular. So, meaning we both can agree that Michael Jordan is the greatest player. But you do know there are people out there, millions that think LeBron is the greatest. Exactly. There are millions that think Kobe Bryant is the greatest. So, you know what? Even though we agree that Jordan is the greatest, I can make a case for Kobe Bryant. That's right. Right here. 
I can make a case. And I said, we can do that with rap. Yes. I we love that, that idea. Yeah. And so that's why you'll see me and him up there kind of debating a lot of stuff. A, a lot of the subjects and the things that we talk about, we actually agree because we the, we, we the same type of person. We both agree Michael Jackson is the greatest. I agree. I but, agree on that as well. But, but I just, he just dropped one now defending Chris Brown. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, you know, I can make a case for Prince. Right. You know, I, uh, Michael Jackson can't do a, a, a split in heels, <laughs> can he? Can Michael Jackson do a backflip and then do a split? <laughs> you know, so... Um, he said in heels. Yeah, in heels. <laughs> he and don't him. miss nothing. And, and, and with the guitar. And with the guitar. So you, you tell me I'm going to do that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that that kind of took us to where now, it's because it's just now really, really happening. It's really going, it's going really good now. And I think that um, that 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 particular you know little little nugget of not seeing sitting there being like a robot agreeing on everything i was the first one coming there and told me yeah fuck that shit you talking about <laughs> you know he, it, you was, kept it, was, a G it was a him. shock value to him yeah you know what i'm saying because you know he up at the, the station ain't nobody talking to people like that you know radio one wouldn't even let you talk on the radio that type of way absolutely you see what i'm saying so i think that now it's translating into you know, ESPN now, you got to have a debate on there. They got to get into a little argument about it. It's friendly arguments, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, and, and they have to be well thought out stuff. You can't just be out there just saying anything. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You know. People will uh, know it's Fugazi. Correct. But, you know, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, I can make a point. Give me one of them. I don't care. Absolutely. Give me one of them. I can make a make a, a argument. I think Whitney, I, he, he edges me out with Whitney. Whitney is my one uh, A, and and Mariah would be one A minus. But they right there. But neck and neck. Yeah. There are people that'll say Mariah's the one A. Yes. And Whitney would be the one A minus. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so I think that's the little nugget that we're kind of doing right now. We, we're able to to go in here, and it helps the artists too. You know. Um, Talking about an artist in a light that compares them to a lot of their peers that were great, it helps that artist. You know, artists will call us a lot of time, be like, man, you know, I know I ain't been in LL Cool J, but I'm glad you even put me in a conversation with him. Man. You know? Um, so I think that's kind of what we're winning at right now. Yes. Is being able to go in there and, uh, and, help the culture more than report uh, uh, what they call it celebrity gossip right news yes now don't get me wrong we still have to do that of course you know what i'm saying if you, if you pull a gun and shoot up the damn the the, the strip club we're gonna talk we're about gonna it. talk about it yeah you know but that ain't our real niche is talking about the greatness of all these different artists instead of the negativity i love that how often are episodes being premiered right now? Uh, pretty much every day. Okay. Uh, I, I, pretty, I go Monday through Friday. I used to go in maybe on a Monday and try to get all my work done, but stuff is stuff is so fluid. Yes. Now, like, I may go home, and then I did uh, – we talked about Puffy last week. I, he, he behind might have dropped it. Five minutes later – they had just raided the house. Exactly. Now there's more news there's to more be news. talked about. So now I'm, I'm at I'm at the house. I'm laid back. <laughs> Do I run back down there? You know what I'm saying? Behind like, man, you want to meet me now? Hit the station real fast. I, behind I was almost there. I'm blooming one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you should have caught me when I first. It's 10 o'clock at night. Then I got to be back in there at 7 in the morning, but. I think that right now, you know, uh, we're winning on just being able to keep a lot of the old school artists relevant. Uh, you're winning on being able to be an outlet for independent artists, as well as you'll still, you know, deal with OGs like me. Yeah. But, you know, from me looking at, you know, your whole, you know, uh, movement, I see that you would be one of the first person I would send my son to. Hey, you need to go over and talk to Tampa immediately. A lot you know of the artists, I'll be their first interview. Right. I get that a lot. Like even parents who manage like their 12, 13 year olds, mm -hmm. they come to me because 
I guess my interview style is a little bit more calm than some of these people out there. But mm-hmm. see, you're absolutely right. I love putting on for the independent artist. So thank you for recognizing that. Yes, yes. And 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 all that is needed. Uh, you know, everybody has their little niche what's yes. needed. And it all, you know, makes all us better. So, I mean, a lot of these artists that you have broke and are breaking, they'll eventually be on me and Beehives because they'll be older artists. Because we more cater to more, more of the old school artists. We will get some young ones in yeah. every time. But... That's the that's the niche, and then vice versa. Yeah, you know a lot of these OGs. We need to start sending them to you too. Exactly. You understand what I'm Shout saying? Big so, Gip, he was here with me recently. Yes, you know? exactly, exactly. So I think it's just a beautiful thing right now, and don't retire. You just all you do, you know, you re, when you retire. It's over. I don't want to retire anytime you know, soon. Now you can you can you can fall back. I call it falling back. Exactly. So meaning instead, of, okay, you might not be here doing this, but you can do it from the Tampa mansion. No, that's fine. And guess what? I do some of my I turn one of my bedrooms into a home podcast yeah. studio. So in the evening time when I do my virtual interviews, yeah. rather than driving over here, I do them from the crib. Yeah, right now. People yeah. don't even know I'm broadcasting from yeah. the house. Hey, I have on a pair of shorts, man, and a and a suit tie and, Yo. and top. Yo. <laughs> Are you peeking through my window? Because that's what I be doing. I'll be like ready from here up. And then yeah. I'll be having some leggings and yeah. some slides or oh, maybe yeah, even no it. shoes. Oh, no shoes. No <laughs> shoes. Be honest, so mad at me. I only wore shoes because I was coming here because I didn't know the layout. She won't tell you. Do I I don't wear shoes to podcast. I like wearing slides. I do too. I do too. So if you ever come back, please just be yourself. Okay, good. You know, like I don't judge nobody because as soon as I get home, I come up out of all this. Yeah. The, the lashes come off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we chill. <laughs> and I put my comfy clothes on, yeah, man. You like, I'm going to get you sucking your leg and your arm and everything. No, come on. <laughs> no, you that don't come on. What's that I'll get you sucking Yeah. With? I don't have any detachable body parts. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, listen, bro, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Appreciate Thank you it. for sharing your journey with us. You dropped a ton of gems yeah. that these younger artists need to hear, mm-hmm. you know, to really make the culture where it should be I'm not saying it's in a bad place but I think no, it could be better it could be better and it's up to us to do it and I'm I am gonna come back cause I got some stories for you too I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you something on the next time well because I, I'm kicking off my series I think I may have mentioned it earlier I'm kicking off a series called Real Talk with Tampa mm-hmm. and that series is not gonna be interview at all it's just gonna be us having conversations about particular topics gotcha. similar to what you and b are doing gotcha. but it, it's gonna be varying topics it do, may not even be music related absolutely you know what I'm saying right. Right, so I right. would love to have you come back for an episode of that. Good, I cannot wait. Can I bring Tia with me? Of course you can. So you that's, my, that's my sis right there. Oh, I love okay. I love Tia. I just want to give her flowers yeah, she, too. Cause she set this up. She was like, "Man, you know, uh, we we got to go holler at Tampa." Because I said, "Well, damn." I almost felt a little disrespectful. I can't get with uh, to go down there with Tampa. I got to go through Tia to no. get down there to go to Tampa. <laughs> but you know what? It, it, all that matters is I'm here. Yes, absolutely. No, Tia, Tia's been... Man, she's a gem. Since I've known her, I moved out here in 2013. I think I met her shortly after that. And she's no. just been... Always a beautiful spirit to be mm-hmm. around. Good energy, and mm-hmm. I love that, man. Shout out to Tia Culver right. checking in. That's yes. Right. You guys need a great publicist, and I'm going to holler at you about that as well because we're looking for a publicist right now. So make sure you holler at Tia Culver. That's right. Facts. Uh, tell everybody where they can keep up with you. Um, I'm really just uh, mainly Instagram. I'm not a big, you know, social media guy myself. Tia been kind of trying to work some of those little pages for me. But on Instagram at the Real Ghetto Mafia, I know that's kind of long. I need to change that shit. But um, <laughs> and and thegalaxywick.com is that my website? That's my website. <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, I just do what I'm told. No, nah, but that's important though. I tell artists all the time, you need your own website because our social medias can be taken away from us. We don't own that. Right. They get hacked. They can get shut down if we post the wrong thing that they don't like. Right. Our website, nobody can take that from us. You can't take that from them. That's right. Y'all heard it. Definitely. Um, any, any other platforms? Oh, uh, that's about it. I mean, I'm on everything pretty much. Uh, but, yeah, YouTube, you can catch me at, B, uh, you know, Beehive ATL. I got my own uh, Galaxy Wick page. I'm monetized over there, too. I'm going to start dropping uh, more stuff on my channel. Uh, I've been dropping my videos on I got a new video, Zombieland. You go over to, the, uh, uh, to my page. Uh, what's the name of my page again? At Galaxy Wick. At Galaxy Wick. <laughs> I'm talking about my YouTube. Oh, Wick 
No, it ain't. I t no, it's not. It's Galaxy Wick on YouTube. <laughs> and go there, and I got new music there for anybody that, you know what I'm saying, want to hear what I got to say. Uh, go to Galaxy Wick on YouTube, and you can check out some of my new uh, music, or you can just go on any platform, type in Galaxy Wick, and see some of the new shit that I got. Man, but I I'm love working. It. That's why I'm in, I'm in the work phase now. I'm not in the showing out phase yet. It feels good, doesn't it, yeah, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to do it. I lo listen, we are a constant work in progress. Yes. We have to continue you to work on ourselves and things that we desire to have Absolutely. it's important yes. um you got a lot of people that love you support you anybody you want to give thanks to or give a shout out to uh like i said man I, I pretty much shout out everybody man from the beginning um you know all my people down and um out in decatur you know um you know because i got clicks everywhere my, my um Shit, everybody, man. Because anytime you start giving shout outs, people feel you left forget, out. Yeah. You forget somebody. <laughs> and it's just better not to even really say a shout out because you're going to forget somebody. The one time I said my mama and my brother were like, well, damn, you know what I'm saying? I'm the, I'm the one that got damn, you know. I hope, hope mama fix you tell you got that alternator we were talking about. <laughs> Off of YouTube. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, that's it, man. Just shout out to anybody that supports me. And there's a lot of people that support me that. That don't want recognition, and and they know who I'm talking about, and that and we right here. Definitely. Yes. One last question. We're live. Industries. Big industries most wanted, not the little one. Okay. What makes Galaxy Wick the industries most wanted? Uh, what makes me the most wanted is you know one of my dashing looks, um, my <laughs> gift the gap, and my drive, um, my originality. And I'm going to give you something that you're not going to be, and I'm talking about my music, that you won't be able to go get anywhere else. And if you like it, then you'll be hooked. If you don't, pay me no mind. I know that's right. Thank you for being here, man. I appreciate you. Give me some love. Yes, sir. <laughs> Boom. We up out of here, y'all. We don't hooked up on the east side. Mm. And we're going to take it to the west side. Y'all follow me, Lord, and wake it.